Good morning. morning from beautiful Sorrento. We are just walking down from our glamping site to take the ferry to Capri. tour was spectacular. The views are absolutely breathtaking. It's crazy to think that you have an island like this with such natural beauty, but honestly, if it weren't for taking a boat tour, then you wouldn't be able to see it otherwise. So for 21 euros per person, that felt 100% worth it. Now to explore the rest of the island. Well, this is pretty fun, thank you. This comes up on all of the websites and blogs, so we're going to try it now. You can smell this place before you come to it because they're actually making their own waffle cones in-house. So I've got what's known as the Fantasia di Capri. 
Not sure what it's got in it, but let's give it a try. Mm. Oh my god. It's like vanilla, Nutella. This is incredible. This is so good. Well worth the money. I got lemon and it is so light and fresh. Amazing. saving money by walking back down instead of taking the funicular. Three fountains, genius idea. just reached the beach and we're going to spend an hour here before we take the ferry back to Sorrento. This place is stunning. Getting the boat tour around was well worth it and then um, we've just been spending a lot of time also just walking the streets and it's just beautiful here. It's so nice and really should be on everybody's bucket list. We're going to spend the rest of the day relaxing so we'll pick this back up tomorrow. See you then. There is nothing better than waking up to views like this. We are glamping at Hostel Santa Fortunata and our particular dome has the most incredible view you could imagine. As we continue on our adventure, we will be providing links to all of the places that we recommend staying at. And this will be one of them, so do check the description below if you're interested. However, because this is technically a campground and there are a few things to consider. The first thing to think about is electricity. There are no outlets at our campsite. However, you can go to one of the common areas like the cafe and marketplace, or we have also found electricity in the bathrooms. So this was surprising to us because we didn't realize this would be the case. And of course, because we are vlogging and editing, we are constantly needing to charge our laptops, our phones, and our camera. Just something to think about if you are in a similar situation and don't think that you can live without electricity for a few days. The other consideration is that it is a little bit outside of town. So getting up here, you do have to take a bit of a hike up a hill. If you don't fancy that, then there is a bus that runs from the center of town to here. Alternatively, the campground itself actually runs a shuttle bus service for one euro 50 that then takes you to and from the center of town. Bear in mind that you need to consider the weather since you will be glamping, 
if you are going to be in a dome like us, then you should probably bring some warmer clothes. That being said, they do provide a blanket as well as two sheets per person. However, if you've decided to rent a motor home, then you'll probably be warmer. Also, the time of year that you're here will depend on what clothes you need. The other part to this, alongside the power situation that we didn't realize, is that Wi-Fi is also an additional cost. So they do have a different price plan according to how long you want the Wi-Fi for. They do also give you a caveat that Wi-Fi may not be available in all areas of the campground, but again, it is an additional charge up to 10 euros for the week. So that is just another thing to think about. Also, we did show you the inside with the beautiful bed and the netting and all of that kind of thing. But in terms of storage outside of that, then there are a couple of options here. So you do have this area where you can store a bunch of bags. There's a lot of room in there. So for whatever luggage needs you have, you can pop it all in there. But don't put your food in there because as we found out, the ants can access it. For your food, they have this coffee table, which doubles as storage for your food. The final thing to think about is that there are communal washrooms and laundry, which could be a bit of a walk away from your individual campsite. But overall, having done a bit of camping and glamping together before, this is probably one of the better campgrounds that we've ever been to. So we do recommend coming here if you're up for a good camping experience by a beautiful town. So I haven't planned any of today. Nick has his itinerary for what he wants to do in Sorrento. So where are we right now? I believe this is called the Cathedral of St. Philip and James. Also, I wanted to apologize for the footage that you're gonna to get today. As you can see, it is raining and we just can't have the camera out for too long at a time. We'll try our best though. me still is just how ornate everything is from the gold leaf to the paintings to the frescoes on the ceiling to the marble on the floor and on the columns the altars it's beautiful but it's unlike any other religious place like a synagogue or a protestant church for example that i've ever seen I think the most impressive thing that I saw in there, aside from some of the altars and things like that, was there was an entire diorama of the birth of Jesus, but set in like Neapolitan society. It was kind of odd to see kind of the two things mashed together, but it was very impressive how it was all put together. So we are stood outside the church of St. Francis of Assisi, who was one of the most venerated figures in Christianity. Uh, but the main part is, isn't just the church, it's also the cloisters, which are part of the monastery that used to be there.
little bit more reading about St. Francis of Assisi. So he existed in, I believe, the 12th and 13th centuries, and he was always seen as somebody who lived in austerity, but was a very benevolent person to both other people in terms of charity and also to animals. The other thing that he was particularly famous for, though, was being the founder of the Order of Franciscan Monks. And those were based really on the same kinds of principles of charity, denouncing lavish things, and also the idea that monks, who historically were really scribes, and it's really focused on their own prayer and worship, should also be able to have the ability of priests who can lead worship in turn and try and bring other people into Christianity. So because of that, that order was established back in, I believe, 1209, and it's still standing today. So its impact can definitely be felt by a lot of parts of Christianity, and this is why he's one of the most venerated figures in that religion. This bit is the Villa Comunale. This used to be part of the monastery and used by the monks to grow their vegetables and crops. It is quite small by all admissions. I mean, that's kind of what happens when you put it as part of the monastery, but it is beautiful. It is kind of unfortunate though, because the main reason a lot of people would go is for the views of Vesuvius over the bay, but because it's raining, well, you can't really see it. What Mount Vesuvius? I saw better this morning from our dome. that they actually create a number of other liqueurs based on the fruit and veg that they grow here. So they offer orange, mandarin, fennel, and licorice, as well as just a lemon cheddar. So what I have here is the orange one. So let's give it a try. Kind of similar to um, the limoncello, like my experience of it was like having a hard boiled sweet with a bit of alcohol infused into it. And it's the same thing here, really, it's like you're drinking a candy that just happens to be infused with alcohol at the same time.
down the street on our way to lunch when a sign that had a handful of coffee beans on it caught my eye. Next thing I know, Nick has spotted a chocolate fountain window, and so we decide to go into this store. Well, it turns out to be a veritable treat. They have so many free samples. The one I enjoyed the most after the limoncello samples was they have a meloncello. This is my favorite. It is to die for. Barely any alcohol taste, so it could be very dangerous. And then on top of that, they just kept on giving you samples of chocolate covered things. Um, I think my personal favorite ended up being their pistachio chocolate, but their limoncello flavored chocolate as well was out of this world. I can't even imagine how the rest of their stock is as well. So yeah, it's called Nino and Friends. Even if you're not interested in buying something and you just want a quick free sample, go in there. So worth it. Nick found Enjoy the Little Things on TripAdvisor. It is the number one rated restaurant in Sorrento and we can confirm there's a reason for that. We had to wait in line for about 35 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, further about. So it turns out the place in Rome isn't the only restaurant we were willing to stand in line for. I had the most amazing fettuccine. It had a gorgonzola, walnut, and honey sauce with it, which are three things that I absolutely adore. Again, was one of the best pastas I've had in my life. Meanwhile, I had the Spaghetti Enjoy, um, which came with anchovies, lemon, garlic, parsley, and chili. And as a combination, it just worked. Oh my word. It was just fantastic. And it felt so light at the same time as really rich and delicious and I cannot, I don't think I've had a dish like that and I probably never will have one that good again, or at least for a while anyway. And consuming the top there basically we got what, a couple of waters, two espressos, and then a pasta dish each. It came to 32 euros. Such good value for money to find some of the best food that you will ever eat. So worth it. Really, really good. Completely recommend that you do go to enjoy the little things, bistro here in Sorrento. I think that's pretty much our day exploring Sorrento, so we're just gonna head home and chill now. So with that, until next time, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>